What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the Volleyball Source Podcast. My name is Everett Delorme. It is Thursday, June 3rd, and today we have a super special guest joining us from the VNL bubble in Rimini. It is head coach of the women's national team, Miss Shannon Windsor. Head coach Shannon, how's it going? Welcome to the show. So glad we found some time to have you on. Thank you. I'm um- we're good. We're day one of a rest day. So feeling a lot better than, than we do on day three of game day. So yeah, feeling good. Yeah. You guys definitely deserve that rest day. The team Canada's uh, women's team is currently two and four at, at the VNL. You guys are currently rocking a two game win streak after a massive win over China uh, and then a three nothing sweep over over um, Germany. And you know what? It could have even been a three game win streak because you guys were this close to taking down one of the top teams in the world in Turkey in the, the first game of round number two. So first and foremost, how are you doing? How is the team feeling? How is the vibe so far in the vo- in the bubble? You know, the team's great. I mean, this team is, you know, they're young, but they are so relaxed and they just take everything, you know, in stride. They're not really phased by much. Um, So when it's game day, it's game day. When it's rest day, it's rest day. When we train, we train and whatever's in front of them is what they're focused on. So it's pretty cool. I mean, the bubble can be, can feel a lot like Groundhog Day and they sort of just got into rhythm really early. And, and I think that, you know, they're handling everything so well. So the vibe's still really good here with our team. I mean, r- running, a, riding a two-game win streak. Uh, I'm, I'm supposing that the vibe would be feeling good. I have to say, one of my favorite moments so far of VNL um, was uh, the technical timeout in the first set against Germany. You guys are down eight three, and the first thing we hear is you dropping an f bomb. Oh, because I know, <laughs> no, I, I know that you might not like that the most, but I absolutely loved it because it showed your fire, and it kind of shows that I, I've always found that sometimes our women's team plays a little bit too nice, and they're too nice both on the court and off the court. I love how nice they are off the court, but especially on the court, maybe they're too nice. And I love how much fire that you brought. They'd be like, hey, no, we can't play nice here and we need to go. And guess what? They did because they turned things around, battled back through that first set and then kind of ran away with the rest of that match against a very, very strong German team. Yeah, I mean, this team, this team battles like I'd say they're really lovely people off court, but they battle when they're on court like they're super competitive um, and it's, it's really nice to coach that. And I definitely listen. I'm not going to lie. Swearing is a part of my probably my daily vernacular, but they um, I try and keep it off TV. But in that moment, it was just it was like they were asleep. You know, we see your two athletes going for a ball and it happened more than once. And it was just like, OK, come on, guys, like we're better than this. And and I, I wouldn't say it was an instant change. It was a gradual progression. We kind of one point at a time we came back against Germany. And and um, honestly, after that first set, although the second set was pretty tight, we felt pretty in control in that game. So, um, yeah, I mean, Hey, if that's what they need in a timeout once in a while, um, I'll, I won't say I won't do it again. <laughs> yeah. I, Hey, no, I, I love it because you know what? I, I feel sometimes that maybe, maybe the young girls across Canada and around the world need to hear that, that you're one of only three female coaches in the entire VNL, VNL or female head coaches. And maybe we need to hear that, that, you know what? Sometimes, it's okay to swear and sometimes it's, it's okay to get, <laughs> get a little bit edgy. So if that's who you are uh, off the court, yeah. absolutely bring that uh, authentic self to, to the court. And I mean, yeah. I say fire up. Like if you got to fire up, fire up and you know, um, yeah, don't be afraid to fire up for sure. Uh, absolutely not. Now, you know, so far the VNL, you guys had a bit of a gauntlet of a schedule. That first group with the the Pan American group, if you will, with Brazil, the USA, and Dominican Republic was a bit of a banger. However, I did feel that, you know, that first set against Brazil really showed what this team was capable of and what the potential of this team was. We kind of dropped off a little bit after that and they had to find their way back and they did eventually against China. But is that fire and that intensity and that passion, is that something that this team is going to have to play with to to be successful a hundred percent i mean for us to be successful at this level especially right now we're going to have to take some risks so we have to accept that we're going to go after some big points and we're going to try and go after some big plays and with that comes big risk and potentially some really ugly errors and i think if we try and play safe and we try and um you know 
try not to make errors, that's where we're not going to find success. So that mentality of get after it, we have nothing to lose. Like we, we honestly have nothing to lose in this competition. There's no relegation. We're ranked the lowest. Um, why are we going to hold ourselves back? Let's get out there and try and make a statement. And I remember when we went to the Germany game after we played Brazil, we said, okay, Hey guys, sorry. After we played um, China, I went into the locker room and I said to the girls, like, Hey, this is game one of VNL. This is game one. We've got a point to prove. We've got a statement to make because great teams can back up wins. And I think after a big win like China, there's always that risk of, yeah, the physical hangover, but the emotional hangover too. Like you're on such a huge emotional high. And, you know, that night we said, Hey, enjoy this guys till dinner, enjoy this until active recovery. But then it's Germany. It's, it's the next day. So we really want to make a point of every game is us showing up. Like it's the first game of VNL with a point to prove. Um, and hopefully that's how, that's how people see us playing because that's really what we're trying to do every game. It did seem, and I, I 100% agree, it did seem like the, I was worried that there would be a hangover uh, after that yeah. win over China because when you beat the defending Olympic champions, the number two team in the world, uh, like China is, like they're a perennial powerhouse. And when you beat a team like that, it's almost kind of like, okay, well, like, you know, we've done it. You know, we're, we're, we're here. Yeah. We've arrived. Maybe we don't need to work anymore. Uh, and maybe we saw that kind of in those first few points of the first yeah. side against Germany. But luckily, you were able able to 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 turn things around. It seems like this VNL bubble is just the perfect mixing pot for this team to learn and this t- team to 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 get better because you're all together for and you guys have been together for already a month now because you had the training camp yeah. b- beforehand but there's yeah. no relegation as you mentioned so theoretically you could lose every single match thank thankfully we've already taken care of that you've <laughs> you've, you've already won some matches you could lose yeah. every single match and it could just be a learning experience how valuable is that fact that there's really no repercussions and there's no distractions either right sometimes after winning a game like that maybe some of the athletes might want to go celebrate a little bit have a couple of drinks but that's not possible in the bubble instead you just go hang out at the beach for a for a little bit yeah we really can't go anywhere other than the beach in our hotel and the gym um so having no distractions is awesome but we have pretty dialed in athletes that's not usually too much of a concern um i think it's just like with you know with this team um yeah they being in the being here we're gaining so much experience in such a small amount of time. Um, previously, Canada would pay, play like 12 games in, a, in an international season. And that's, you know, that's maybe played against a lot of Norseka teams. We're playing, you know, 15 games against the best in the world. And we're gonna do that for two summers in a row. So the amount of development and experience that we can um, get for such a young playing group is so invaluable. And we talk about, you know, getting better every single game. and. Um, we, we literally play a game. We show a bit of video on things we want to improve on. And then this team just goes out there and gets better at it. Like it's, it's insane, the rate of improvement of this playing group. So it's really True. exciting to coach. It's really exciting to coach. And now when we have three days off, you know, we really have to manage the loads of our athletes because this is a marathon. So there's a physical component of how we manage our athletes um, while at VNL. But we'll have video session tomorrow. We'll spend two days working on a couple of things. And I guarantee you, you'll see improvement in those things over the next three games. And then we go again and doing five weeks of that. Like that's, that's insane opportunity for us to get better. Yeah. It's, there's really no, there's nothing like it quite like at, at this level. And you're completely right. Usually the women's team plays, you know, a handful of matches and you know what, no offense to Mexico and Trinidad and Tobago. Those aren't really matches that, that you get up for. And that's why you see the women's team, a lot of the, like the Pan Am cup, it's usually three, nothing wins and three, nothing losses, right? It's three, nothing yeah. wins against, against the teams that we're supposed to, to win against. And then you go play the USA and Brazil and you get, you know, you know, beat yeah. up a little, be, beat up a little bit, th- three, nothing. We yeah. have seen such a huge rate of improvement from this team from, you know, like shell shocked on day one and, and day two <laughs> against yeah. the U- USA was, was, yeah. was quite a bit of shell shock to the grinder that mentality that they, they had in, in round two. It seems like defensively, they're just picking up way more balls. Is that, was that one of the first things that you had to pick up on uh, after round oh, one? Yeah. Oh, not even round one. I think, I mean, obviously we, we had to make a few, we had to make some adjustments after round one on our high ball defense. We were getting caught super, super high and we just weren't making an adjustment between an in-system attack and an out-of-system high ball. So that was something we definitely dialed in. And, and then we, you know, played, um, 
the round two, and that was an automatic improvement. We started to creep up a little bit about Germany, but we'll talk about that one um, at practice. Um, but actually, in, when we arrived in Italy a month ago, uh, we were really struggling with cross court defense, and it took you know a couple of video sessions and you know two two training sessions, and then all of a sudden these girls they understand a lot better the system we're trying to play and where we want to line up and what we were doing. So it was like that was the first kind of realization, like wow, like a bit of video, some really you know purposeful reps in that area and these athletes they, they pick it up really quickly and you know I think everybody has different rates of you know uh, rates of transfer when you're working with athletes this is a really special group a really really special group so defense was something we dialed in early and the 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 kind of the change between round one and round two was specifically on on high ball defense versus in system defense. And, you know, we're still, we're still kind of working on that, that back your defense against a backcourt attack versus a frontcourt attack. We're still not, not there yet, but we're, we're working on that. Well, it's so difficult, especially for this roster. You've got athletes who are starting who basically didn't play this year. Like Hillary Howe was at Trinity Western and she didn't play a minute. Right. And she's been going off, you know, um, Cassie Buian is brand new to the team. She did get to play in Spain this year, but, um, it, it's funny that you mentioned cross court defense because I found there's been a few fantastic digs. Andrea Mitrovic oh. has just strapped on a few from four, yeah. Like especially in against Brazil and 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 the USA, like there's been a few great ones where she's pulled off the net and just strapped it on and and got For a sure. dig. Yeah, it's been it's been huge, and I mean that wasn't happening a month ago. So just to see how quickly they can pick those things up, and there's been some big performances. And I would say the one thing that I can say about you know Hillary and Andrea, who are who are fairly new to playing this much international volleyball. I mean, Hillary was in our in our B team, our next gen team, two summers ago. Um, they are absolutely fearless. You give them a challenge, and I guarantee you're going to get like the best you can ever get out of them. They are just fearless competitors. And Cassie's having an unreal tournament so far. So I'm I'm just so pleased to see some of these young athletes who are getting this amazing opportunity. They're grabbing it with like both hands and just shaking it. And they're going to continue to shake it until the end of VNL. I guarantee it. Like it's 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 a very fearless group. Absolutely, and we've we saw that especially throughout round two, going toe to toe with some of the best in the world and come out with some wins yeah. is is phenomenal. How important is learning how to win? Because we saw that hiccup against against Turkey in in the fourth game, the first game of, of round two, up twenty three sixteen, and then just let it slip, and then they ended up winning it in, in five, and now. To the to the rest of the volleyball world, obviously that that's what everyone expects from Turkey. They're one of the powerhouses. They've you know medaled at this event before, ranked number four in the world. They have one of the strongest professional leagues. But you know what? That was a match that you guys were in and, and definitely could have won. So how important was it to, to be able to learn how to win? And you guys did it quickly because you just turned uh, it's, around it's the next so game. I think winning's contagious and losing is contagious. So you do have to learn how to win and to pull off big points in pressure situations. Like I think you'll see against Turkey is we just sort of broke down under the pressure and we were unable to kind of come back where when we played China, we, we, we went in and out of a game plan and we'd lose it for a couple of points and they would come back and just refocus. Hey, remember what we're playing. Remember what's working for us. This is what we're trying to do. And they were able to come back against Turkey we struggled to come back. So just being there the second time in a fifth set where they know like winning's on the cards because it's, it's really easy to win points when you, you feel like you're sort of meant to lose. So all of a sudden, okay, I'm meant to lose. So all of a sudden we win a set. Okay. We're not supposed to win this game. We win a second set and then it's going, Oh my goodness, we can win this game. And that's a whole new level of pressure. So dealing with that in Turkey, we didn't, we didn't come through obviously in the end with Turkey, but then going against China and finding ourselves in a position to win, we're like, yeah, we're meant to win and we've been here and we can win. And it was just a whole different way of handling the pressure. Um, and doing that, you know, within a 24 hour period was pretty crazy. Um, I know we beat ourselves up pretty good after losing to Turkey um, mentally. I know as coaches we did anyways. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I mean, th that's very fair. Did you find like it, it seemed like from my perspective as well that you, maybe you yourself learned some lessons Maybe you weren't uh, as quick on the the timeouts and uh, the substitutions, bringing Alexa in in that fourth set, and then we saw the complete difference in, in in China, where as soon as they got rolling, you called that timeout, you brought Alexa in to to uh, solidify the serve receive, and really, I think that's kind of what led led to that win. Yeah, I think it was um, 
it was a 1312. I, I really wish I had to call timeout against Turkey and it went to 1412 and we lost the game 1512. So that timeout sat with me a bit. Also late in the, in the game, I, I could feel they were super rattled and I was trying to calm them down by just saying, Hey guys, like we got this. And I, I realized like I didn't give them enough instruction instruction. Those last, that last like timeout. Cause I, I didn't want to overwhelm them. And I'm like, no, like I've got to be able to give them instruction. They've got to be, maybe they're going to find that comfort in those instructions. So when we we're getting to China, I was making sure, even though I was feeling them get a bit rattled that I was giving them instruction during those timeouts to, to help calm them down rather than like, you know, it's kind of like everyone stay calm. Whenever you say that, no one stays calm. So let's try a different tactic in round two. So, I mean, the athletes are learning, but coaches learn just as quickly as athletes. And I think that's what people need to understand. Like this is a journey, a journey for all the athletes and for the coaching staff and man, we're going to get a lot right. And we're going to get a lot wrong and it's okay to get things wrong as long as we're, we're learning from it. And isn't, yeah, you kind of got to get it wrong to get it right. Right. Absolutely. So it works. No, absolutely. And I mean, it's a, it's, what it's so exciting about this team is that there's so much newness, right? Brand new coaching staff, like I, I, brand new coaching staff. We have saw so many retirements and there's so many new young girls on the team. Like it's a very, very young squad. Um, how important is the fact that the, your coaches on the sidelines are, are people, you know, very, very well, that people that, that you've worked with, wor worked with in the past in, in Australia. And it seems that you guys have a, a very good bond and a very good vibe amongst the coaching staff. Yeah, it's really important for me. I, I keep a quite a small circle. Um, I, I want people around me who I tr who I trust and who are who are very loyal. And um, Vinny is new to me, um, but we we connected so quickly and just got on really quickly. And his um, his knowledge of volleyball is phenomenal. So also, it was a no brainer for me to work with him. He's insane. And so and he works predominantly on block defense. And he's um, He's amazing. And so we clicked, clicked really, really quickly. But Lauren was obviously the first person I brought on staff. Um, I'd worked with her before we, we played together and we know each other quite well. Um, she really keeps bringing me back to what we're trying to do. Like if I start to stray a bit, she's like, no, get back. Like I know what's important to you. Like I know what standards are important to you. I know what values are important to you. Like she knows me as a person. So um, that's really important to me, but also to know that you've got someone who, when you're doing battle, like when you make a mistake, it's not someone who's going to throw you over the coals. It's someone who's going to, okay, Hey, we made a mistake there. All right. So what are we going to learn from this? And I think having people around you who you trust and, and, you know, have good intentions is huge. I, I keep a small circle. I do. <laughs> I, I mean, Hey, I think it's, I think it's a good thing. And I mean, might as well, because, uh, you guys are going to be together for a long, long time. And especially just in, in this bubble and then throughout, throughout the rest of the season, because I mean, there's still North Sika championships to, to, to look at. And uh, I think yeah. as much as, you know, VNL is important, it's a huge learning experience, but I'm really excited to see what this team can become and how they can attack the North Sika championships at the end of the year, because that's what, that's what really matters, right? That's where most of the points are found. And that's where, you know, the process to, to start, qualifying for 2024 and uh, other events like the world championship starts from. Yeah. I mean, with world championships next year, it's going to be uh, obviously the top two from the confederation will go from Norseka will go, and then it will be based on world rankings. So world rankings are more important than ever before. So what we do here will be important for champ world championship qualification, but you know, Norseka has been at the end of the summer, having spent, you know, played 15 games against the best in the world and then going back and going through another solid training block, um, I think North Seekers will be a pinnacle for us. And I'm, I'm pretty excited to have another crack at Dominican as well. Um, so I, I would like to, I'm looking forward to that. And to think like when we, when we started for VNL and preparing for VNL, you have to understand the mentality we have to have as coaches. It's going, okay, what can we realistically tackle in these three weeks before VNL? And what do we have to table for another time? So there's things that you have to just accept. This is where we're at. And these are the things that we can't really change over the next, like, and I'm talking from a technical perspective, like maybe it's an individual technical components of an athlete. Um, we won't be able to change that in three weeks. So let's leave it. And so that's where I think we're excited to get back in the gym in Richmond and really dial into a few things that, you know, from with each athlete and also as a team that we probably weren't realistic in trying to tackle in three weeks preparing for, for VNL. So that that's, yeah. it, it sounds like a long time, but it's really not that much of time to, to prepare for an, an entire international season. Now, early, not at all, not at all. No, uh, absolutely not. Er, earlier, you you talked about how much Hillary Howe and uh, Andrea Mitrovic have have stepped up, and 
obviously that comes because of uh, the the current injury to to Alexa Gray and that she's not able to 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 swing away and, and stuff like that. Is that almost like a better case scenario because you're both just throwing both of them into the fire and it's kind of like, hey, you guys need to figure it out because we all know Alexa Gray is a world class hitter. She's one of she proved herself to be one of the best outsides in the world this year in, in the Italian league and and in the Champions League. And it's like, hey, guess what? She's not going to be here to bail you guys out. So both of you rookies kind of need to figure it out. <laughs> I never want to say it's it's a positive to have Alexa Gray out of the lineup. She has come off an insane season in Italy, and she's obviously a, a key hitter for us. And we would love to have her back in the lineup as soon as possible. Um, but yeah, we have two young athletes who are on the court at the same time, and they have to figure it out. And they're just thrown into it. And um, they're able to, the team's also able to find confidence. Um, you know, some confidence without Alexa on the court, which also is a positive to know that other people can score against these teams and can score at this level. Um, you know, there's some positives out of it. And honestly, what's been really cool to see is um, Alexa sort of just talking to these athletes off court and just, you know, talking to them between timeouts and, you know, her leadership has, has really been coming through at VNL and it's been Really cool to see that side of her. So I think that she, although she's not on court right now, she's been contributing a ton to this team, a ton. But these young athletes, man, they've just taken this opportunity and they've run away with it. Yeah, absolutely. I found uh, on Andrea was a little bit shell-shocked at first. And, you know, we've yeah. seen some different lineups with Kira on, on the left side and China Joseph going on the right. But then she came in against Turkey and really she just came in without any fear and she, since then she's been absolutely balling and it's been so much fun yeah. to watch yeah and i think with the young athletes it's sort of just them understanding that you know uh when they're coming out of university they can use the same shot kind of over and over again and they can score um and here it's like okay we need to have more tools in our toolbox and understanding that the toolboxes we give you before the game that we that we you know giving you hints on you know how we're going to score against this team um, we need to listen to them and implement them. And I think there was a real kind of moment that clicked for Andrea, you know, coming to that Turkey game was like, okay, like, man, I can, I can go hard against hands and I can find the edge. And that's my best way to score. We don't want to give these teams an opportunity to dig me. And I think both Dre and um, Hillary have made huge improvements in those areas. And it's just the realization, like when you hit around a block at this level, that they're probably going to dig you. So get after the edge, get after the hands. Um, yeah, and they, they've been really exploring that a lot. And yeah, it's been pretty cool. Any chance that we're going to see Alexa Gray in the front row in this VNL? Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I, I don't have a crystal ball, but we're working hard for it. And obviously, we um, we want to make sure we're looking after our athletes, so we don't want to push anything too soon. But I, I'm very hopeful. I'm very hopeful. That, that's an exciting thought. I know that I, I messaged her the other day, and she said that she's, she's getting antsy, and I, and I know that. Yeah, her. she's totally getting antsy. I think she's there's a few games there. She's like, I just want to hit. We're like, yeah, okay, we can't do that yet. But, um, yeah, she's getting antsy, but she's doing it. She's she's just she's doing a really good job off court. Like, I've I've been really pleased to see how she's handled herself and kind of the role she's taken on the team. Um, and so maybe, you know, that's also a, a positive, you know, her being in this role and She's had to kind of find her leadership in different ways. And that's been pretty cool to see her evolve into that. Yeah, I, th I think there was even a few times against Germany where she was getting subbed in to pass in the back row and she was lining up like she was ready to hit that pipe ball. <laughs> and, 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 and I, I know that if Bree set her, she would have been ready to rip away. Maybe maybe not the yeah, pass yeah, no. body, but... Yeah, we, we were actually laughing at video because we sometimes go through and we're like, hey, Lex, you're approaching to hit a bick. And, you know, she's not supposed to be approaching it. I think at one stage... Yeah, she was just, you know, you can't, it's ingrained in her. She's she's ready to attack. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You've spoken about leadership, and obviously a lot of lead this leadership uh, retired in the offseason. Of course, the long, long time standing captain, Kyla, uh, Kyla Ritchie, hung it up, and she's now running a winery. I'm kind of jealous. Yeah. It's great. But how valuable is the experience of Jen Cross? Because she's been on the national team for so long, and she kind of has like, I love the fact that Jen is now the captain because she has that that grinder mentality and that never say die attitude. Like you know that oh, yeah. she's going to get into your face and she's going to be a fighter for it. Jen is fierce. Like um and you know when we when I when I took over, you know, uh obviously Kyla retiring was re was really um you know we didn't want to see her go. I would have liked her to stay on, but I understand, you know, life moves on. Um we put a leadership group together and it was actually the athletes who voted on the captaincy and it, um, and, you know, Jen was obviously 
a clear favorite for the athletes to take on the captaincy and she's done an amazing job she's a fierce competitor um and i think that when we get into the front row and we're kind of at the end of the game and i think a few times i sort of have that conversation where i'm like hey take us home jen and you just know she's going to be there and you, you just know she's going to be totally dialed in and focused for those last few points and um jen's great um she's been a real a real resource for the coaches i think being new staff and finding our feet as staff she she provides such an awesome link to the athletes she gives us invaluable information she kind of taught we talked through a bunch of stuff and um i i am so grateful to have her like i can't stress enough how grateful i am to have her in the role that she is and i know the coaches we rely on her a lot and we have a really good relationship but i also know when it's like 12 12 man put her in the front row and i promise you she's getting after that ball oh yeah absolutely i mean she's been she's been like that since she was a club kid right so yeah. that's that's just her through through and through now yeah. for me uh, I did a I did a uh, a preview show with Chris Alec, who used to be uh, uh, um, with with the team a, as a, a data volley guy, and I said my not my expectations, but my preview was a six and nine record. I know that's maybe maybe a little bit high. Yeah, <laughs> see even even your face, but I have high expectations for this team. Where <laughs> where did your where did your expectations lie, or is it just kind of because there's no pressure of relegation there's no pressure of, of figuring out is it just kind of a let's go there and learn uh, i wouldn't say learn because it's I, I, obviously we want to learn and learning is important but we are high performance and so actually before we came in we said we just want to build every day get better and we want to win and we want to we want to make sure that we finish just the higher world ranking than, than we started so that requires us to win games we didn't put a number of games on there um, we didn't say we want to obviously if there was a relegation we'd want to win a minimum of four games i, I imagine um you know, we want to win at least that, you know, four or five games, but um, we didn't put a number of wins. We just said we want to build every single day and improve our world ranking, which requires you to win games. And at the end of the day, like we want to learn and learning is really important. We talk about it a lot, but this is high performance. It's not about everybody getting in and gain, a, gain an experience and learning from it. It's about us performing or underperforming and learning from it. So I just, it, it is about winning. Um, yeah, I just try to make, keep, make sure that we have our process goals and our process goals are really, okay, we talked about high ball defense. Um, next game, is it better or worse? Well, if it's better, great, awesome. That's a huge success for us. Okay, now we're going to talk about lining up properly in the block. Is it better or worse next game? Okay, it's better. Okay, fantastic. And that's really how we're taking it is, and so far every game has been better. We saw a great set against Brazil. Um, Obviously, then we we obviously didn't we crumbled a little bit after that first set. We USA, we started off strong again. We crumbled again, played a bit better against Dominican. And then we started to be able to sustain some of those performances. Then we get to a five setter and lose. OK, now we get to a five setter and win. And then we beat a team in three. So, I mean, that's improvement. And that's exactly where our goals are. So it's not a number of wins. It's about getting better every single game. And so far, so far, I'm feeling like this team's being successful. I would definitely agree. I've I've hundred percent uh, seen an improvement, and I mean, so with with volleyball source, we have a Discord uh, a Discord channel, and basically, it's kind of just like a forum for everyone to kind of like share their thoughts, and it's been very active, especially during the during, during the Canadian games. And I know that people across the country has been have been very impressed by the the rate of improvement uh, of this team. So I, I think you're, you're winning there. It's still, it's still early. We're still not even at the half point yet, but <laughs> y you guys are, you guys are, are still all, you guys are, are, are definitely on that, that right path. Are you, is there a team identity that you were looking at to, to try to achieve coming in? Or is that something that you guys are discovering as you go through this competition? Well, we, we talk about team standards and we talk about, you know, what it will take for us to kind of get to the, get to the, compete at this level and we talk about always choosing to compete and that sort of that identity where I know that I would like this team to strive for and we would like to strive for is that we're always choosing to compete when we're um ahead below um under like losing when we're you know playing well playing poorly we have a choice of how we show up and we need to show up to compete and we also want to make sure we have like this warrior mentality that when we're faced with a challenge we're going to embrace it and we're going to we're we're, either, we're going to get after it and we're either going to you know play well and have some success or we're not and we're either way we're going to make sure that we embrace those challenges so that just that 
that mentality of getting out there and, and taking some risks and, and really choosing to compete every single time. And I think sometimes you'll hear me even say that in a timeout, Hey guys, like right now we've got to choose to compete. And I think that that's the identity we're really looking for right now. I mean, Canadians are nice, like we're nice people and, and that's great, but I don't want to be known as a nice volleyball team. I want to be known as a competitive volleyball team who has a bit of an edge and, and when they're faced with a challenge, they're going to choose to be a warrior. So that's what I would, that's what we're really hoping to achieve. I've definitely been loving your timeout so far. And I mean, oh, it's no, no, no. I, I, I ate I like microphones it. in my timeout. Like I, I want to say, I think Jen hit the, hit the, hit the, ca- the uh, microphone away and it came back and we just, we both looked at it and went, hi mom. And we're like, come on, like leave us alone. Hey, that's something that you're going to, you're going to have to get used to, especially as this team kind of cl- climbs the rank and, and becomes a bigger stature. Do you think now that you guys have put the other teams on notice and been like, hey, we're not just here to make up numbers. We're not here to kind of maybe get relegated next year. Like we're here, we're here to win and we're here to, to make a statement. Yeah, I think that I, I, I don't think we'll be catching many teams by surprise anymore. I think that teams will be lining up pretty strong against us. Um, you know, we have we, we did face Turkey's uh, starting lineup uh, eventually, but they didn't start out that way against us. Um, so. And I just think that now we're, we're not going to, it's not going to be uh, as easy to surprise teams as we did originally, you know, in the first and second round. So yeah. that's good. We're up for it. I mean, like I said, these players, like nothing phases them. They just, Oh, we're playing Brazil. Okay. We'll win a set. Like it was, it's just these players, they're not really that phased by anything. Well, especially like you have, you have some world-class talent, right? Like we haven't even talked about Kier Van Rijk. Right now, she's third in scoring in the VNL. She's yeah. been an absolute monster. But is it bad to say, like, I expect that from her, right? We've seen that from her. She's put this team on on her back multiple times in the past, like going back to past yeah. years. And you know, after the the year that she had in Poland, like we know that she has the ability to score twenty, even thirty points on a consistent basis. Yeah, I think I think the biggest change in the last two years has been, you know, obviously we haven't been together as a national team since 2019, but um, now she has the ability to, to put these performances back to back. And I think that's what we're really seeing. Like two years ago, we'd see these performances for sure, but they weren't game after game. And now it's game after game. But the beauty of our wins against China and um, and Germany were really that other people were scoring. Dre had a huge game against China. Okay. And I think, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, other people are scoring. And so she is, is performing game after game after game, but then you're also seeing other people step up. And obviously we have, we also have world-class middle blockers. And um, I know, you know, our past scenes are working, work in progress. Um, but we know that our middle blockers are, they, they're like a wall, like they are phenomenal. Megs and Jen have had a couple of huge games for us at VNL and they consistently perform at that level every single game. So, I mean, this isn't happening by fluke. We have really good athletes now playing in top leagues around the world who are performing at a very high level on a regular basis. So now we're in VNL and, you know, our, our starting lineup is, is, is very strong. It, it deserves, you know, it deserves some recognition for sure. Yeah, I absolutely agree when it comes to the, to the middles. I was saying in the preview show that I think Canada has maybe the most under middle rating, uh, underrated middle pairing yeah. in the world with with Jen, and, with Jen and Maglio up there. Like they can play, and I mean they showed it in the Turkish league this year. Maglio had a massive year playing for Nulifer, and yeah. Jen won a CEV Cup, and she's just been she's been a, a competitor, you know, since since she started. So absolutely, when you've got those pairings there, you know that blocking is going to be a huge part of the game plan and absolutely has you guys have been throwing up double digit blocks in pretty much every single game yeah and i and i agree with you i think they're two of the most underrated middle blockers in this competition and um i mean they, they've been fantastic for us and they you never really question what they're going to offer each game they are probably two of the most consistent athletes we have in this team like they deliver that same performance every single game yeah, absolutely. Now Cassie Bouillon has has come in, and I found that she's brought she's kept so many rallies alive with with her yeah. de- with her defense. You mentioned before, serve receive is still an area that this team is working on, but defensively, it seems like so many rallies that I expect to be done are are just kept alive, and that's really where a lot of this fire is coming from. Yeah, and Cassie has really come into her own. I think it was, you know, she played her first game against Brazil and it was an, an okay game. And then she just fired up against China, but it was the the days leading into China 
all of a sudden she's at training and she's like directing the back court. She's talking to athletes and, and me and laws or, or Lauren, we looked at each other like, all right, Cass is stepping up here. And now she just owns the back court. But it was like, it was this sh slow shift into the, the athlete you're seeing now, you know, she was there liberal, a little bit tentative, you know, not sure. And her first game of internet, true international volleyball was against Brazil. So, I mean, let's, let's be realistic. Like she hasn't played a ton of international volleyball. So it took that one game and, a, you know, then Lex played a bit of libro. So she was able to see Lex play and then she just started to step up at training and now she's on fire. So we are so pleased with Cass. Like she's, she's just been, it's been amazing to see her work and she's really owning that position now. And um, yeah, she's commanding it. I like it. It's good. Uh, absolutely. I, I love a, a libero. That's your backcourt quarterback For sure. you know your your safety back there who's going to point and who's going to take control over it and i've 100 percent seen that rise in confidence from her as as she's she's gone on and you're right starting off your international career against uh brazil isn't isn't the easiest but especially in round two she kind of like stepped up to the task oh yeah china she she just kept us alive against china she really kept us alive against china and the thing is the other thing like with our with our passing um, we're not accepting we're not we're not amazing passers yet we're, it's a work in progress for us but we just sort of we we really challenge the athletes like hey when we we get down with passing let's not focus on you know being the best passer in that moment let's be focus on being the best out of system setters we can possibly be and it's just to take a little bit of pressure off passing is a hard skill it's an extremely hard skill it's tons of gray area so instead of putting the pressure on hey you have to be perfect passers we're going to work to become as best passers we possibly can but in the meantime we're going to be excellent out of system setters and we're going to be great high ball attackers and that's sort of the mentality we're sort of we're taking in, at bnl at the moment I love it. And I, I think we've definitely seen the high ball, high ball scenarios kind of against Brazil, USA, Dominican Republic were a little bit iffy, right? Out of system setting was a little bit iffy at times, but then it kind of changed completely 180. You know, I, I don't kind of wonder what you guys did in practice those those three days and what kind of accountability that these athletes have, because the, the rate of improvement we've seen from this squad has been, you know, it's, it's almost like watching a 13U team. It really yeah. is. Yeah, well, we um we actually started the training camp with like some basic concepts of how we want to play, and one of them was just being great out of system setters. So um, when we we do go in and out of it sometimes in a game, and you kind of get what you focus on. So it's not so much of hey, we need to change our skill. We can all set high balls. It's just changing their focus. Is we are great out of system setters. We are going to be great out of system setters. We need to be great out of system setters. And if we can get them to focus on that, I find that sometimes that's half your battle, right? It's not about changing them technically or, or repping it out. It's about them just having the focusing on the right things. I definitely see how the focus focusing on the right things has led to the success because it, as, as you know, I mentioned before the first ma matches were, uh, there was a learning process and it, they seemed, yeah. the team seemed a little bit stunned at times and that, oh, sure. you know, in round two, that wasn't there at all. And, uh, that's very exciting to see, not only for, for this team right now, but I really truly believe that this team feels so much like the men's team did a decade ago, you know, that this is a, a rebirth of Canadian women's volleyball because you know what, like. I've watched some of the talent come up in this country over the past few years, and I know some of the talent that we have on the next gen team and on the junior team and, and stuff like that. And this, like, th like you know, like this is only the, the beginning. I feel with for women's volleyball in Canada. Yeah, I mean, I can't, I can't stop smiling just thinking about it. Um, yeah, we have a ton of talent, and we're just now starting to put like the structures in place to prioritize that talent and work with it. Um, and engage it and monitor and track, you know, I think that we're doing a lot with our, our, you know, our four to eight years out of Olympic qualification, you know, those athletes who are currently 17, 18, all the way up to the senior A team and the there's an abundance of talent and the future is so bright and I think that we are starting to do a really good job of how we work with that talent and I'm um, getting them, you know, into or getting them, you know, working with um, our systems and having a shared language. And it is a work in progress. We still have a long ways to go, but we've started and we're at the start of a journey. It's a journey that I 
I am very, very excited about, like very excited about. So I smile every time we talk about, you know, the athletes who are, you know, not currently playing in the national team, but who are targeted to be playing for the national team. I think, yeah, it's pretty cool. But not only that, like I, I physically seen how on the men's side, the mentality of, of boys volleyball has changed to be like, Oh yeah, I can play volleyball to be like, no, I want to be on the national team, right? They go to the Olympics, they have success. And I truly believe that your guys this team's success right now is going to lead to that same mentality uh, amongst girls. And that's even more important because there's way more girls playing volleyball in this country (laughs) than boys. Like it's not, it's not even close. It's like five to one, six to one, seven to one, right. And in terms of ratio. So if we can, inspire that next generation of young sure. girls and young volleyball players uh, i'm extremely excited yeah i mean you're spot on i mean winning is inspiring and you know winning getting a couple of early wins here and hopefully we continue to have solid performances but that's that's inspiring and and i think that will only help us um build this program and i i know it's been, you know, the men's program, I obviously spent a lot of time away from Canada, so I'm not fully across it, but, you know, I've, ch- I've connected with Glenn a few times and they're so supportive of us right now. And they, I hear that all the time, like we're, you know, at the start of where the men were and um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited, but winning helps, winning helps inspire. That's for sure. Well, you guys are on a two, two game win streak right now. Uh, so, yeah. so let's keep it going. Um, I do want to touch on something that's, uh, a little bit not so fun. Luckily, it doesn't involve your team, but we did <laughs> see we did see a, a situation er, er, earlier this week um, with some racist actions from the uh, Serbian team uh, in the match against Tha- uh, Thailand. How demoralizing is the fact that this kind of stuff is still happening at this level? And how much of an issue is the fact that other than saying that they're going to do an inquiry about it, there really hasn't been any action from the FIVB yet? Yeah, I'm, I'm keen to see what the action is. Um, I To say it's disappointing is an understatement. It makes me extremely angry. Um, there's just no place for it. There's no need for it. It's not okay ever. Um, I know that the players are no doubt remorseful, um, but I'm not interested in the they should know better angle. There's, I, there's, I, a, there's not, a history of this. I know. What? There's a, there's a history, I mean, from them, from when they qualified, what was it, the qualification for World Champs? Yeah. It happened again. It happened in 2017, uh, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I just don't, I, I don't, I don't understand it, and I it makes me super angry. Um, I'm, I really hope the FIVB handles this appropriately. Uh, I can't say I, I, I have a lot of faith that it will be, but I know that our players and our team are, are, are very disgusted. Um, you know, I, it's just never okay. It, it makes me angry. It's not even a disappointment. It's not. It's not like my three-year-old child making a mistake. These are grown women who know better, and it's it's not okay. It's racist. It's it's just no place for it in sport. And it for a sport that I love, I think it, it does put our sport in disrepute. And I think that's that's where it makes me really angry. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was seeing it come up on my TikTok, and people are are upset about it on TikTok, and like. I love it when volleyball is in the mainstream media, but for not for this reason. And it's definitely, it's, you know what? It's frustrating, but it's also not surprising that the FIVB hasn't d- done anything about it because you know what? That's kind of where, th- what they've done over the years. And they kind of just like to, to sweep that kind of stuff under the rug sometimes. And it's, it's, uh it's frustrating. Yeah. I mean, I kind of, I am one of those people that kind of try, I try to have faith in the system and I, and I, I don't know, maybe blindly have faith in the system. I hope that FIVB deal with this, but I also think in this day and age with social media and the platforms that athletes and coaches have, I see so many countries and so many athletes speaking out against that. And I think that that's just as powerful. Um, I think that, you know, I hope the FIVB handle this, but I think that it's really awesome to see our volleyball community kind of come together and um, speak out against it to, to know that this is not okay. It, it's, it's, it's shameful on our sport. Um, and so I've been really pleased to see that, that, you know, countries and athletes are doing that. Absolutely. Now looking for, looking forward, uh, and round three, you guys have Poland, Japan, and Netherlands. It doesn't get, get, get any easier. <laughs> with, 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 it doesn't get easier, does it? No, it doesn't at, at all with, with those three teams. Um, but, a three very different teams in, in the way they, they play volleyball. So what are kind of some of the goals and, and expectations that we have against, against three of, you know, the biggest team and three more of the, the biggest powers in the world in women's volleyball. Yeah. You know, Japan's playing some great volleyball right now. I think Poland's had a few, a couple of 
kind of rough game. So their confidence might be a little bit shaken at this stage. Um, our expectations. Yeah, don't... yeah, no, we got them first. Right, right um, for the picking. Yeah, we're going straight for them. Um, we got them next. Um, no, I mean, our, our, our goal is always to go out there and challenge teams. I think that, um, you know, if we can, if we can frustrate them with our block, our block, our blocking is huge. And one of the big things that we've tried to improve on is just, we say we want to serve with a miss in our pocket. So we always want to serve with that mentality that I, I have a miss like tennis, you get a second serve. Right. So we want that. I think if we can keep them under pressure from the baseline um, and let our block do the job, we'll frustrate some teams. Um, Japan is playing some pretty amazing volleyball. And I think uh, the Asian style of volleyball is always um, a little bit different to, you know, what, Canada usually faces and that that can provide some challenges but um yeah I think also we're seeing some huge size against both Netherlands and uh Poland's huge so um yeah watch this space I think it will be uh an exciting few games but it does not get easier no, at all it doesn't get easier are we going to be seeing the same acrobatics from you that we saw from the Dutch coach <laughs> the other day yeah i said to the girls like if that ever happens i would probably like turn and dive but if i ever go down like it's gonna take me a solid five minutes to get back up like send fraser in i'm gonna need help <laughs> so no that was impressive the, like that was impressive the way he yeah. pushed up and went right back up yeah. to his feet like that was yeah. that would that was he set the else. bar high he has set the bar really high i'm not i'm not up for that um i'll probably just lay there and hope the cameras don't pan to me <laughs> Fair enough. Well, coach, uh, I can't thank you enough for coming and, and talking to us today and talking to me today. Uh, it's really been a thrill to watch this team so far, and we're not even half the way point yet. There's still 12? No. Yeah. No, nine matches to go. My math yeah, is a little like, bit. You're adding some on there for me. I mean, hey, it's, I, I just want to see more volleyball. Maybe let's push for the final four, right? Sure. Right. We can do that. Uh, hey, right. If you guys make it, I would be more than happy. But more than happy. But uh, I'm already so happy with how this team has been playing and and what uh, I've seen from from this team. And uh, you know what? I can't wait for more of your timeouts. Please uh, <laughs> let let the f bombs fly. I know maybe the FIVB Volleyball Canada <laughs> might not be too happy with that, but I think I think we need to show that fire and and you you bring that fire and you set the tone and and I love it. Thank you. I, I appreciate you having me on. Um, I, hopefully, we can um, have some more solid performances for you guys. But it's been an exciting journey so far, and we're just at the start of it. So watch us for the next few years. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm, I'm excited to be, to, to, you know, to, to be along for the ride and uh, yeah, best of luck against you guys can check out uh, team Canada on June 6th. I believe that's Sunday uh, at noon Eastern time, 7 a.m. Eastern time and 7 a.m. Um, Eastern time on a Monday, Tuesday, the 7th and the 8th. So a few early mornings for those of us in Canada or late nights, if you're on the West coast, yeah. um, to, to check out this team, but I promise you it is well worth it. It's a, you guys are a lot of fun to watch and, uh, I can't wait for more. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot guys. Thanks a lot, coach.